Hey guys, Mr. Gibson here. So for this activity, this is this is an elaborate activity. And we've done one of these before. And so what this does is it lets us kind of just extend uh, up the knowledge that you've gained so far. So it's it's maybe going to dive just a little bit deeper or go a little bit beyond what would necessarily be on a quiz or a test. But it does. Uh, its intention is to uh, kind of reinforce what you've already learned but also to connect what we're learning to like a real world scenario to kind of answer the question of why are we learning this? So um, let's take a look at this ins these instructions. So this is elaborate 1.2 sickle cell anemia, which is a disease you're gonna learn about if you haven't already. So it says, uh, watch my demo video, which is this right here. So if you're watching this first, good job. You've done the first step right. It's very important that you watch this video. Um, then you're going to copy and paste the attached slide of your genetic code into your interactive notebook somewhere under unit 1.2. Okay, you're going to really need to use that today. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have cracked the human genetic code. We did it, you know, quite a while ago. Um, and what I mean by that is we know for, uh, so remember your DNA gets transcribed into RNA, gets copied into RNA. And, um, your ribosomes when making a protein will read your RNA in a sequence of three letters at a time or three nucleotides at a time, nitrogen bases at a time. Uh, uh, we call those sequences of three codons. Okay. So here are two charts that show you how to read like a ribosome. This is pretty cool. It tells you for every codon, what that codon, what amino acid that codes for. So for example, if you look right here, U, 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 if an, a ribosome were to read that, it would know that phenylalanine, P-H-E, is the amino acid that it needs in that spot to build a protein. Okay, so you have this version here that I'm gonna teach you how to use. You also have this version here that I'm gonna teach you how to use. I will say, in like future science classes, I usually see this version more often, but people usually prefer to use this version because it's a little bit easier to read. I don't care which one you use. I put both of them on there so you can pick which one you like the best and use it. So first thing, you're going to put both of these slides into your notebook, okay? Then you're going to watch the video about sickle cell anemia. It's only four minutes long, and it's going to talk about what that disease is what it's caused by, what symptoms it causes, where in the world we might find it, and why that disease might have arisen in the first place. I am not gonna spoil anything right now or watch that video during this video because I don't wanna waste your time. Uh, rather, let's go ahead and jump to the last step. So this is finally, you will demonstrate the exact mutation that causes sickle cell anemia. So we're gonna open the cami, we're gonna answer the questions using our genetic code. All right, so, here we have your activity for the day, and it looks a little daunting, but don't worry, it's not that bad. Okay, so uh, you might want to type your name somewhere up here, and it tells us a little bit about mutations. So there, there are a few types of mutations. One is called a deletion, and that is when, um, when your RNA is transcribing your DNA, when it's being copied down, it leaves out a letter or it deletes a letter, and so that causes a pretty big issue. Um, we call that deletion. Insertion is where instead of when it's copying down, accidentally deleting a letter, it accidentally adds in a letter that wasn't there before. And so that causes pretty big issues. And the reason deletions and insertions cause really big issues is they cause what's called a frame shift. And that's because the frame of the whole RNA strand will shift one way or the other, depending on whether there was an insertion, meaning now it's longer, or whether it's a deletion, meaning now it's shorter. And because your ribosomes read it three letters at a time, that will mess up the sequence of three letters or the sequence of codons uh, for the entire rest of the RNA strand. So that can really mess up uh, the amino acid sequence uh, and therefore your proteins. Now a substitution uh, is where it's reading, uh, it's copying down the gene into a strand of RNA and instead of adding or deleting one, it just accidentally swaps one letter for another one. So if the sequence is supposed to be AAA, it might accidentally copy down AAG, and it swapped the A for the G. Now, if a substitution mutation 
changes the amino acid, we call that a missense mutation. If it does not change the amino acid, we instead call that a silent mutation because if it doesn't change the amino acid, so for example, if right here there's a mutation that changed UUU to UUC, both of those code for phenylalanine, PAG. And so you would never know the difference. Your ribosomes would never know the difference because you'll have the same amino acid. So we call that a silent mutation. You never know that those have even occurred. Okay. Um, if it changes the amino acid to the codon that tells the ribosome to stop reading. Um, so like basically if it cuts the sentence off right in the middle, then we call that a nonsense mutation because it just completely stops trans, uh, translation. And that would really mess up your proteins. Okay. So what you guys are... Uh, supposed to do today is you're going to, you're given a, a gene, you're given a sequence of DNA, and you're going to transcribe that into a sequence of RNA, and then translate that into a sequence of amino acids or a protein. Okay, so I want to show you how to do this first one. And eventually, it's going to give you plenty of practice to make sure you get good at it. And then at the very end, it's going to have you do the exact kind of mutation that happens in real life that causes sickle cell anemia. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, here we have our DNA sequence: T A C A C C T T G G C G A C G A C T. Blah 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 blah. Okay, probably not going to read those again because that was that was miserable. Um, what you have to do is tell me what mRNA sequence. Uh, is going to be the complementary strand or going to be transcribed down. Now, if you remember from your gizmo and hopefully from your stenoscopedia, the RNA sequence is made by matching up the nitrogen bases that match to that original DNA sequence. So you don't need any kind of special assistance here. All you need to know is that A always matches up to T, U always matches up to A, C and G always match up to each other. All right, so let's make a text box. I'm going to do this first one for you. I like purple. Let's use purple. Okay, so what letter matches up with A? Well, or excuse me, with T. A always matches up with T, so I'm going to put that there. Okay, what always matches up with A? Well, in DNA, T matches up with A, and this is really where I'm going to be able to tell who watched the video and who didn't. But RNA, remember, does not have thymine. Instead, it has uracil. So everywhere there would be a T, there's a U. Okay, so while A usually matches up a T, this is an mRNA sequence that we're using here. So we're going to put the letter U there. Okay, G always matches up with C. U with A. G. G. And you guys should get so good at this that you could probably do this in your sleep. Okay. Got A, A, C. I'm getting really OCD about those not lining up. <laughs> C. It's okay if yours don't line up. G. C always matches up. G. U with A. G with C. C with G. U with A. When I was in college, I had to do these that were like dozens of bases long. So you guys only have a few to do. <laughs> so here we have our mRNA sequence, okay, that matches with our original DNA sequence. So boom, we just did transcription. Now, you're going to notice something when you're going through here. You're going to notice that all of these start with TAC. And, that's, and that means that all of your mRNA sequences will start with um, AUG. The reason that we see that is because look down here, you see that MET, AUG codes for MET, methionine, and that's coded in green. And if we look over here, we see AUG codes for methionine. Methionine is your start codon. It will always be the first one that your ribosome reads. Uh, it's like uh, the first word of a sentence will always be methionine, MET. Uh, so that's why you will always see AUG there. Okay, so now to find our amino acid sequence. Well, what we need to do, we need to read like a ribosome. We need to read in sequences of three, okay? 
So the first three letters or the first codon is A U G. So what we do now, you don't have this. I don't have this memorized. Uh, what uh, codons code for different amino acids? That's why we use our genetic code. So the way we use this one is you have to use, and I'm, let me listen very carefully here. You have to use the mRNA. The DNA or the tRNA does not work with these charts. They only work with mRNA, okay, because that's what your ribosome reads. So what we do with the codon is we use this chart, with the first, second, and third letter. Our first letter is A, so we know it's going to be in this row here. Our second letter is U, so we know it's going to be in this column. So we know it's going to be somewhere in this box. Now all we're looking for is AUU, AUC, AUA, or AUG. If you remember, it's AUG. So that means our amino acid is MET or methionine. And so what you're going to do is start a new text box, and our first amino acid is MET. Okay. Now what's our next one? We've already used AUG, so now we start at the next three, UGG. And I'm going to use this one to show you how to do that. This one, you just work from the inside out. So our first letter is U, our second letter was G, and our third letter was G. So this is TRP. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, so that is TRP or tryptophan. Now, something you may do to help yourself out is space these out. I didn't do that. You could space these out to where they're already like separated out into codons, and that would be totally cool. So you, you, you're not your eyes aren't going to mess you up. It's up to you. You don't have to do that. Okay. Um, now our next one, we've done AUG, we've done UGG. Our next one is AAC. So let's go back to this one. Our first letter is A. Our second letter is A. So we know it's in this box. And our last letter is C. So that codes for ASN, which is, its name is asparagine, but you don't have to know that. ASN. All right. So we've done these three. Uh, now we have CGC. Let's go back to this one just to get practice. CGC is argon. Okay. Not argon, goodness. Uh, arginine, ARG. All you have to do is the abbreviation ARG. Okay. Then we have UGC. Let's go back to this one just to get practice. UG. And so U is going to be uh, somewhere in here. G is going to be somewhere in here, so we know it's right here. And UGC is SYS or cysteine. I think I said SYS, I meant CYS. Um, and so we've done one, two, three, four, five. And now we have five here, so that's, we're good, doing well. Now, UGA, watch carefully here. If I use U, G, and A, look here, it's the letter stop. Stop is not an amino acid, okay? Instead, think of this as like the period at the end of the sentence. This is where the ribosome would stop reading. Whatever it sees, UAA, UAG, or UGA, that tells it there's not an amino acid there. It tells the ribosome, okay, we're done building the protein. And so you don't have to type anything else. We are done. And so this protein would have five amino acids, MET, TRP, ASN, ARG, and CYS, okay? So this is your original sequence. Um, what you guys are going to do is find out all the rest of these are mutated versions of this. And you're going to tell me what the mRNA sequence is, same way I did up here, what the amino acid sequence is using your genetic code, and um, will there be effects? There will only be effects if it is a deletion and insertion or a missense or nonsense mutation. If it's a silent mutation, meaning the new amino acid sequence is the exact same as this, then that's a silent mutation and you would not have any effects. Okay. And it wants you to tell, tell on this line, what kind of mutation happened. Is it a deletion? Did something get deleted? Was it an insertion? Did a letter get added or was it a substitution where you just swap one letter for another? Okay. Um, so you're going to do the rest of these answer these, and then you're going to do this exact same thing for sickle cell anemia, and you're going to find out the exact mutation that causes this disease that affects people in Africa and South America. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. Um, uh, hopefully this won't be too difficult. All right, guys, good luck. Let me know if you need help.